Back on Friday the 13th, we saw a surge in gold futures volume. Given the current crisis unfolding in the Middle East, was it a true flight to safety in gold, or was it just parking capital over the weekend? The following Monday showed subdued action, and our own gold purchase index showed little change in physical demand. And now, a week later, things have changed. Let's get into it. That Friday, the 13th spike in gold futures was the largest since the Silicon Valley Bank banking crisis of last March. It was a huge move, followed by two subdued days on Monday and Tuesday. But the rest of the week saw continued rotation into gold futures as gold contract prices increased. Volume was high as the news coming out of the Middle East went from bad to nightmare scenario. Okay, that's the paper futures market. What about the physical market? The gold purchase index comes from our own research in the physical bullion market. It shows the volume of activity among various online gold dealers. It shows a correlation with the paper market to the extent that volume for the latter part of last week had increased while at the same time gold prices have been going up, a trend that will likely continue if things escalate. One thing that's really, really important is that purchases by retail gold buyers are still well below August levels. I've moved this chart and the silver chart to the home page of our website, which you can find at citystacker.com. I see a lot of you are watching this channel on your TV, so I'm mindful to not say something like the link is in the description or pinned in the comments because those things aren't easy to get to from a TV. Anyways, the most recent version of my gold and silver charts can be found on our website. Now, my investing style is to buy while the trend is down, dollar cost averaging to the bottom. Chasing prices higher isn't my style, so I'm staying out of this move for now. There's nothing wrong with buying here though, and I may change my mind. Gold is at essentially the same price it was three years ago, and two years ago, and one year ago. It doesn't seem like there's a need to rush to pile in. You may have seen this chart already. It's been going around social media for a while. It overlays 1970s inflation with today's inflation, which is following an eerily similar track. If it continues to track, then what we'll see is inflation, official headline inflation, coming down while the Fed eases. That's expected sometime next year. Perhaps Q3. There are random variables in play that could delay or accelerate QE. One of those variables is the crisis in the Middle East. Gold and silver should move up sharply during that period in the cycle. I've been saying this from the beginning, that the Fed is in the driver's seat and that we're not going to get $30 silver until we first get $21 silver. That's now happened. It was short and sweet and now it's behind us. I'm counting on next year being a very, very good year for precious metals. Janet Yellen says the U.S. has enough money to back two wars, meaning Ukraine and Israel, simultaneously. Really? Where? Because when I look, all I see is $33 trillion of debt. Where is this money going to come from? Well, taxes and inflation. That's right. To fund the hundreds of billions of dollars in new spending, you and I are expected to tighten our belts. For how long? Indefinitely, it seems. Together with shady practices, our lives will keep getting more expensive without us knowing. For example, did you know that the last time the Social Security earnings limit was increased was in 2019? Until full retirement, Social Security recipients can still work and earn income, but only to a limit. Once that limit is reached, Benefits are reduced. Official inflation has increased by around 18% since the last increase in the earnings limit. And you all know that the real inflation is more like double that number. Why hasn't the earnings limit kept up with inflation? Because they need the tax money. That's why. They said so. Social Security is expected to be depleted by 2034, at which point benefits will have to be reduced. Some lawmakers are concerned that increasing the earnings limit could further erode the trust fund's finances. So there you have one of their sneaky ways to force our belts tighter. Which is why we stack, right? To have some measure of control over our lives. Something that's isolated 
from all the craziness out there. I know that inflation has caught up with a lot of people, forcing them to sell off some of their stock. I really hate to see that, to be forced to sell at what seems to be the bottom. The reality is inflation is likely to boomerang higher after it dips next year, maybe over the course of two or three years. The late 70s and early 80s were terrible. We survived, but oh man, was it difficult. I have a feeling, and more than a feeling really, because the data is telling us that life is going to get more difficult. There's something that Milton Friedman, one of the most influential economists of the 1970s, said about inflation, which looks a lot like what we're living right now. He said that early in an inflation cycle, everything seems great. Excess capital is sloshing around and people feel good about the economy. Then, as inflation starts impacting our daily lives in a negative way, people don't feel so great. And finally, life gets a lot more difficult. People get angry as governments are then blamed for rising prices. Isn't that exactly how things are going? Haven't we been fed a steady drumbeat of greedy business is to blame or Russia is to blame? That's my worldview anyway, having grown up in the 70s. Keep in mind, none of this is financial advice. Each person has their own investing style and mine is not going to be the same as yours. You may not even like the word investing and I'm cool with that to each his own. I'm certainly not going to try to put words in your mouth. I do enjoy sharing my research with all of you. If you found some value here, please consider liking the video and subscribing if you haven't already. As always, I appreciate your time and may you have a great day.